It's Alabama and Florida in the SEC championship game. Three o'clock start in the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. CBS will be televising. Ken, it seems like we've been waiting for this game all year. We thought when the season began it'd be these two's butting heads in the championship game. They did exactly what everybody thought, and they're coming into it undefeated. Uh, it ought to be another just great, great game like it was last year. Sure, John. I think uh, we talked about earlier, this game has been circled not just in the four or five weeks that we all knew it was going to happen. This game has been circled by both teams really since last year's game. I, everybody kind of knew that they'd both be back, and here they are. And, of course, Alabama gets a hard-fought win over Auburn last Saturday. I think that's got to help prepare them going into the Florida game. I know they would be prepared anyway, but, you know, that was a tough game for them. They came out on the winning side of it, and I think that refocuses them going into the Florida game. It sure does. And just having the knowledge that they can come through with a very courageous fourth-quarter drive, uh, particularly given the circumstances of what happened in the fourth quarter of last year's game. I think that sends them in on a, on a really positive note. Some interesting things have happened since uh, Saturday. Uh, Florida loses a, their star defensive end, um, and a problem with drinking and driving type thing. He will not be playing Saturday. Let's talk about that a little bit. Carlos Dunlop is a great player, a difference maker. Um, he's a guy that will be uh, picked in the NFL draft, although he had to spend a lot of money uh, with that bad decision uh, earlier this week. Um, he leads the team in sacks. He has a ton of tackles for losses. However, what a lot of folks don't recall is that Carlos Dunlap did not start last year's game. And in fact, his backup um, did start last year's game, and his backup, of course, will start again uh, this year as well. Alabama star running back Mark Ingram uh, had a hit pointer in the game against Auburn on the very last drive, actually, actually. and uh, I believe he's ready to go for Saturday, but he could be slowed a bit. Well, he was sore, but I think he'll bounce back, and I, uh, I saw him two days just in a very brief uh, practice period. He's, he's running fine. And of course, they got Trent Richardson right behind him, and he may be almost as good as, as uh, Ingram. He is an outstanding, outstanding young running back. He's got the speed, and I tell you what, you don't lose a whole lot when Ingram's out of the game. Ingram can, Ingram is, is, is uh, a bowl you over. He, he's probably a little bit better between the tackles, but you're right, in space, Trent Richardson is really come on. He is so much better than he was at the start of this season. Just a little more comfortable. I think he's just learned a little bit about following blocks and, and being just a little bit patient. That was patience he didn't really show early on. This game seems so even to me, just like last year, but if you have to give any kind of edges, in my opinion, give Alabama a little bit of an edge on defense, give Florida a little bit of an edge on offense, the kicking game kind of balances out, maybe favors Alabama a little bit with Lee Tiffin, but what are your thoughts on that? Right. Um, I think it, it was interesting. Lane Kiffin uh, this week, our, our, the head coach of Tennessee, who's never short of, of an opinion if you ask him, says that uh, Florida has better players and Alabama has better coaches. Um, we'll see. I, this is a player's game, though. I don't know that schemes are going to win or lose this thing. Uh, it didn't last year. Uh, when plays were there to be made in the fourth quarter, you know, Alabama made those plays in the third quarter. Florida made those plays in the fourth quarter. Um, that fourth quarter has really driven Alabama since before the start of this season. I mean, their whole goal, finish, finish strong, finish every drill, finish every practice, finish every game. And it's toward this game that uh, everything has been building and we'll see if they can finish it out this, this week. And I would be very surprised if it didn't go into a fourth quarter game. I think it's going to go down to the wire. Of course, Florida with Tim Tebow, the guy just knows how to win. Uh, you know, you got to think that he's a difference maker, obviously. Uh, but I think this thing can go either way, and it may come down to who makes the fewest mistakes. The crazy part is both teams are so primed, and it is silly to think that it wouldn't be close. But if one team really gets rolling, and I don't know which team that is. I could almost see it being a surprisingly not very close game, um, that, that a team just starts stretching it out. And, you know, because it is such a momentum game, I could almost see it not being close. 
but I don't know who's going to win. That's very interesting. Of course, I think these are the two best teams in the country. It's like a national championship game. Whoever wins it does go to the national championship. Talking about just added pressure on it, I mean, you're going for the SEC championship and a chance to play for all the marbles. It, well, for the second year in a row, essentially, Alabama and Florida are in the final four. Uh, it's up to Texas and and somebody else uh, to, to do their part. But we know this is a national semifinal game. It was last year, same way this year. Ought to be a great atmosphere in the Georgia Dome Saturday.